If you're going to design VLANs, you have to know an organization's people and technology. By the time you're done here, you will observe and participate in the process of architecting VLANs around the VIA business. And I want to remind you that this video is part of a much larger series that talks all about creating VLANs and configuring VLANs for an organization. But in this nugget, I want to specifically cultivate the mindset, not only what you see and observe, but the behind the scene reflection that you should go through before you ever configure VLAN number one. And by the way, you should never use VLAN number one. So what is VIA? VIA is my organization. It's a managed service provider that delivers IT services to schools and nonprofits primarily, some businesses as well. And if you were to walk in the door, you would see what I would call normal departments. We've got our accounting department. We have our technicians. We have sales individuals. And, and keep in mind, this is a high level view you could subdivide those. Like in accounting, we have some purchasing, some inventory, some uh, people that are specifically traditional accountants. We've got technicians that are some engineers, some technical account managers, some that go to the, to the sites, some that stay behind the scenes. But you're gonna see all of that doesn't really matter. And I'll explain why when we get more into the VLANs. If you look at our technology, we have normal technology. We have computers, both desktops and laptops. We have IP phones. We have wireless access points. We have servers and we've got, I mean, cool stuff. I mean, if, if you were to look around, there's, we actually have video surveillance. We have uh, a beam robot, which is, is so cool. It's a, it's, um, if, you, if you just Google beam technologies, it's fun. Uh, it's like a little uh, video conferencing screen attached to a, a little robot that you can drive around. So our remote employees can actually beam into the office and drive this thing around. It's, it's wireless. It's, it's really cool. And th these are all thoughts that you should be thinking about. Just look around when you walk in the organization. What kind of technology do they have? Because you're really trying to hone in the three questions. And this is part of another video where I expounded on this quite a bit. So I'd really recommend if you haven't seen it, you look at the video all about the rules of creating VLAN. There's only three. You create a VLAN when you have a need for security, scalability, and treatment. That's it. Three rules. Keep it simple. So looking at the VIA organization, here's how you should be thinking about creating VLANs. The first question you should be asking is, are there security concerns or needed accommodation because of those security concerns? This is our rule number one. We create VLANs when we have a need for security. Well, looking back at the different technologies and departments that we have, the initial thought is, oh, well, accounting, that has money. We should divide those people from other people. But in today's modern world, not true. Just about everything is cloud-based or stored on servers. There's very little chance at least from a security perspective, of the technicians or the sales folks hacking into the accounting PCs and actually getting anything of value whatsoever, especially if those PCs are managed devices, meaning company-provided devices that have adequate virus protection, malware protection, and so on and so forth. Now, if you have a larger organization, you may start dipping into the scalability side of things. Maybe you have hundreds of accountants, thousands of technicians, Okay, now you've completely left the security side of things and you're looking at scalability. But with 30 employees, that's not an issue. So let's look at the technology. Is there any security concerns between these technologies? Well, you may not see it, but my head is nodding. First off, I'm just looking at the right-hand side because that's where my pen left off. The servers are completely different technology than everything else. And it's these devices that typically hold the files and services for the local network. Now, a lot of what's stored on servers has changed with the advent of the cloud and everybody moving to the cloud, like Office 365, Google Docs, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of the security concerns around servers, at least from a files and folder perspective, may have just migrated itself up to the cloud. But even so, even if the servers just run the services for your network, such as IP addressing with DHCP, DNS, print services, that's still a completely different security concern as well. That represents its own VLAN. Now, when you look at the wireless access points, a couple things come to mind. First off, those wireless access points need management. And so does the switches in our network, and so does the router in our network, and so does just about every network device, printers included. That represents a separate security parameter. But you know what? I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm not gonna create a VLAN for wireless access point management and switch management and printer management, because overall, those have about the same restrictions as my servers. So when it comes to the management functions of network devices, I will typically group those into the same VLANs as the servers that I'm managing. 
Now, once again, I still want to emphasize I'm focused on the security aspect. If I have hundreds or thousands of wireless access points and switches and routers and everything else, that's moved into a scalability side of things. And maybe at that point, if I have quite that many devices, I would have multiple VLANs for servers and so on and so forth. But again, I'm just talking security. And with that, move your mind over. IP phones. Those are a sensitive bunch. And I would want those into their own secure VLAN because if you open those to the rest of the world, and when I say rest of the world, that means just combine them with the rest of the employees and so on and so forth, they can not only access the web interface of these phones pretty easily, but there's also ways that you could use to try and capture the actual audio streamed into those phones. Reassemble it as a WAV file, convert it to an MP3. That's not good. So that definitely represents a different security parameter. And then I think about the computers. And my mind shoots all the way back to what I was talking about wireless access point. Actually, I don't think I finished my thought. I said, when I think about wireless access points, I think about them from two different ways. The first is the management. Yeah, I know I didn't finish my thought. The first is the management. And that's why I was talking about how I combine the management with the servers and so on and so forth. But the second is what are those wireless access points serving as in the devices? Typically in an organization, just like VIA, you're going to have devices that you manage and then devices that you don't. You're going to have employees that you manage and you're going to have people that you don't. It is really commonplace nowadays to have a guest wireless network. If you have a bunch of people coming in for a conference or a big meeting that has people that you employ and also people from the outside world, it's considered normal for somebody to pull out their laptop and say, oh, do you have a guest Wi-Fi I can get on so I can get to my files? If you don't have such a thing, you'll find your employees giving out the pre-shared key for your corporate VLANs just so they can get those guests online. So good grief, just from that first question, are there security concerns? We've already generated a number of VLANs. We've got one for our servers, which also includes the management of network devices. We've got one for our phones. We've got one for our managed devices, which I didn't really address directly, they primarily exist because I said we need to create a VLAN for our BYOD devices, which also might be called our guest network. Four VLANs already generated. Second question, are there technologies that consume many IP addresses? As you might have guessed, this question goes at the heart of scalability. The reality is a VLAN equals a subnet. And if that subnet runs out of IP addresses, you have to create another VLAN. So the question do we have technologies that consume a lot of IP addresses is really relevant because our subnets are finite. We can only have so many IP addresses. Well, based on the size of VIA right now, and I'm emphasizing right now, scalability, probably not a concern. An easy answer to the scalability question might be to separate computers and IP phones, but those are already separate because of security concerns. Another one would be to separate the BYOD devices from all of our managed devices, but again, those are already separate because of security concerns. So all the scalability questions in our case seems to be answered by the security question. So let's move on to the third. Is there networks or traffic that needs special treatment? This is the third reason for creating VLANs. Security, scalability, and treatment. Now you might remember treatment when I talked about this in uh, the nugget where I expounded on these three reasons could be quality of service related to where I say this traffic is more prioritized than this traffic, or it could be treatment such as content filtering, which maybe uses a different DNS server. And I treat the traffic differently because I restrict some VLANs to where you can't change the DNS server if somebody's trying to get tricky to avoid the content filter. And there's a lot of other examples we could use for that. But when I think about VIA, most of the treatment question is already addressed by the security question. The big one that needs separate treatment is the IP phones. They need a higher level of quality of service, as in prioritization. I want to make sure that traffic gets the priority bandwidth, whereas everything else can get whatever's left over. But inside of the VIA culture, and this gets back to the what you see and what you don't see, is the need for a VLAN of creativity. What I mean by that is we're a managed service provider. We set up all kinds of customer environments in-house before we take them to the site to deploy them. So when it comes to treatment, I think of a lab VLAN, which could be for a customer environment, or maybe it's just some of the engineers want to try something, but I don't want it to blow up the production network, so we'll separate it off. So maybe lab isn't quite the right word. Maybe a word like flex would come in. In a lot of the network environments I've deployed, I always have a flex VLAN, 
When I see that name, it tells me this is kind of a multi-purpose VLAN. It's flexible to whatever we need for the moment. So at this point in the journey through VLAN, we've identified five VLANs that VIA needs. A voice over IP VLAN on a twofold concern, security and treatment, I want this prioritized. A guest VLAN, this is our BYOD, and again, I would say this is a twofold concern, security and treatment, which you might say, well, treatment, what, how are you treating that one? Well, a guest VLAN usually will be content filtered. A guest VLAN will usually be bandwidth restricted because what if somebody brings in a laptop that's running a BitTorrent client and it's just downloading and uploading all kinds of illegal software? That can consume your whole organization's bandwidth if you let it. Throttle these guys down. Five, 10 megabits per second, whatever the guests need to do their work, but not much more is what you'll give those guys. The managed devices is in their own little secure world. The flex VLAN, I talked about that, and that could be security, treatment, and scalability. We don't know what's going in there, it's flexible. But the beauty is, is having that already thought about when you roll out your VLANs, keeps you from being in a reactive state when somebody says, oh, oh, I need a VLAN for blah, and they throw it out there. You've already got your flex VLAN defined just for them. And the last VLAN I would create is a server VLAN, which I'm also calling static. Because I threw managed devices in there, a nice global way of thinking about that VLAN is to say, if it's got a static IP address assigned to it, it goes in this VLAN. Now, these other two questions that I have on here, I'm going to save for the video that I'm going to create around naming and numbering your VLANs. That's coming up next. For now, you have observed and participated in the process of architecting VLANs around the VIA business.